to Trinity Episcopal Church on this sixth Sunday at Pentecost. Um, this is the start of a pretty full day for us uh, because for one thing we have obviously coffee hour, but then after coffee hour starting around noon we're having a vestry meeting. It's a pretty big meeting because we have among other subjects to discuss online giving as well as the uh, uh, 
coming up. Um, Wednesday at noon, we have Copland Wednesday at seven. Both of those, uh, there are directions on how to reach those. Um, also, virtual office hours for Bob is running Wednesday afternoons. There are directions to reach those also uh, in bulletin. The fish boil is going to be again Friday the 24th. That's a week from Friday. Uh, it will be takeout only. Uh, from five to seven, we're probably going to need people three or four o'clock Friday afternoon to uh, start the big production process. That is part, of course, of hometown festival week, which of course isn't going to look like it usually does, but then again, nothing is right now. So I believe that is everything that needs to be discussed before the mass. So let us worship God together, beginning with in 686. reading from Genesis. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethul the Aramean of Pada Aram, sister of Laban the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is to be this way, why do I live? 
So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other, the elder shall serve the younger. When her time came to give birth, was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle, so they named him Esu. Afterward, his brother came out with his hand gripping Esu's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esu was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esu because he was fond of game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once, when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esu came in from the field and he was famished. Esu said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff, for I am famished. Therefore, he was called Edom. Jacob said, first sell me your birthright. Esu said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esu bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esu despised his birthright. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 119, verses 105 to 112. We will read it collectively, uh, starting and ending with the refrain. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Glory be to the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from Romans. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Word to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some of the seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone who has ears listen. Hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes in and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. And for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. We believe in one God, the Father, Amen. the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge in baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning, I will read each prayer, finish it with, O risen Christ, and you will respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God, our Peter, keep us aware of your presence, support us with your power, comfort us with your protection, Give us strength and establish us in your peace. This week, we pray for Father Jeffrey, Alan, David, Jeanette, Judy, Andy, Dottie, Wes, Betty, Sue, Harry, Rich, Larry, Rock, Doris, Linda, June, Jeff. For the dearly departed, John Robert and Mary, may the light perpetual shine upon them. O risen Christ, hear our prayer. prayer. Throughout our diocese and the wider church, we remember those who are carrying out the work of the church, especially presiding Bishop Michael Curry, and our Bishop Stephen Miller, and our diocesan staff. O risen Christ, hear our prayer. prayer. Gracious Lord, 
Hear our prayers for all who are engaged in the battle against COVID-19. Pour out thy gracious spirit, we pray thee, upon those on the front lines of medical intervention, both here, across our land, and across the world. Bless them with health and energy, with insight and compassion, and protect them in the midst of this crisis. O risen Christ, hear our prayer. We pray for those in self-isolation, those awaiting test results, and especially those fighting this virus within their own bodies. Comfort them, lift up their spirits, and strengthen their resolve. O risen Christ, hear our prayer. Look with pity, O Heavenly Father, upon the people in this land who live with injustice, terror, disease, and death as constant companions. Have mercy upon us. Help us to eliminate our cruelty to these our neighbors. Strengthen those who spend their lives in establishing equal protection of this law and equal opportunity for all. And grant that every one of us may enjoy a fair portion of the riches of this land through Jesus Christ. O risen Christ, hear our prayer. And for those who are currently at home, provide us with the insight of how best we can use this time. Enable us to reach out to others. Enable us to live carefully, creatively, and protectively in the midst of this ongoing pandemic. Strengthen us in our spiritual journey. Help us to be people of compassion and to live with gratitude. Gracious Lord, be with us now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In 707. Jesus Christ, for the means of grace 
and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. As is all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. No, that's to yourself. There's another shot. To see. There we go. That's the sun.